Hello there, fight fans. Welcome back to What Culture Combat. I am, of course, Gareth Morgan, and today we fancy doing something a little bit different. Let me explain. So, I managed to head on down to the incredible Team Phoenix gym in Newcastle, and head trainer Matthew Teasdale uh, was kind enough to teach me 10 submissions that were pretty damn hard to escape from when you've got an opponent's back in like a seated position. So, Matt, this incredible trainer, has been working in the game for about 30 years at this point, and he's been training in a wide range of martial arts. He began teaching in I think it was 1997 and he's been teaching full-time since about 2001. In terms of his overall experience he's a certified instructor in Lameco Eskrima, Kali Sikaran, Jeet Kune Do, Muay Thai and he's also a black belt in shoot wrestling. So he's pretty much a master of putting you in positions which are near impossible to escape from. Without any further ado here are 10 MMA submissions that are almost impossible to escape. Number 10, rear naked choke. So we got five steps, I say I was say five steps to heaven so we're gonna go from here I'm gonna dip that all the way in so that my forearm my bicep are on his carotid artery elbow goes on top of his trap this one can go behind so you can go behind the head you can go behind the neck if you have the gi you can grab the the, the sleeve or you know what in Kali we grab behind our own head so we can bite <laughs> don't do that in no no way. no don't do that in <laughs> so we got five steps to heaven first one is I Pull in towards me. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> That's the first one. Second one is I drop my elbows down. <laughs> Third one is I push his head forward. Fourth one is I put my shoulders back. Fifth one is I breathe in and we do it all at the same time. And we <laughs> yeah, it pops up. <laughs> That's the one. That, that works. And we, we say good night. Yeah, good night, good bless. He's trying to fight it. I'm going to go two on one. Take the underhand out, slide it. So that gives me a little gap there. If you have a gi, you can grab the gi. Up top, behind, and there we go. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> There's no way of not coming in off of me. 50 more times or something? Yeah, literally. That's what we normally do, isn't it? It's like, okay, five one side, five the other, and you go bright red and you go again. Number nine, schoolyard choke. So I go for the That's full right. rear naked like this. If he takes that top one off, sometimes it's difficult for me to finish it. He can start to manipulate this arm. So I'm gonna yank that thing out of there and I can go right here. So now for me, two different ways I like to do it. One is a gable grip like this, or you can go with a fireman's grip or a chain grip like this. Yeah, and I'm just gonna put my forearm right down his back. Again, the elbow is, into his, is right on his trachea, so the forearm and the bicep are on the carotid. And I just push my head in and squeeze everything in like that. So this, this arm is pushing forward and this one is pulling. Head is pushing forward. So we call that a schoolyard job. I feel, I feel like I'm being schoolboy. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> so, two on one. I go here. He's gonna pull that one off. So I'm gonna yank that thing out. Chain grip or gable grip, put your head forward, and away we go. It's good, it's good. You can tell it's effective if the cough yeah, you get that cough. Out. We need that it's cough good. every time. Number eight, face bar. This is one thing when you wrestle with catch wrestlers, because shoot all comes from catch wrestling. But part of it does is there's a lot of these kind of nerve things. So when you go here, and they call it subo. So this one goes right across the face. So I put the radial bone right here, the real sharp bit there. Oh, it's sharp. And <laughs> you can get it, now, you can have it in the eye. You can have it, in, this is a good choice. For you. Eye, <laughs> cheek, ear, nose, up to you. you. Spoil, and then they just grab that same thing, just like the choke, and they just crush it in. Yeah, it is, it's just so awkward. You just feel your, like your cheekbone feel like it's trying to crush into your nose. It's just nuts. <laughs> it's not good, but it, it's, exactly it's good. That's exactly what I'm yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, one, two, we go here, whoop, whoop. He pulls that top one, I rip it out, and right across here. I'm gonna go like that. Now, if he grabs my hand off there, whoop, up, and I go back to that one. So, so many options. All of these just flip back and forth. So you gotta be ready. Not only do you need to know the next answer, but you need to know when to abort it. So there's a really great quote is, uh, good grapplers know a lot of techniques, but great ones know when to abort them. So if you're not getting something, switch to something else. Number seven, armbar. So, here we go. Again, there's a lot of different ways to get into this, but we're just working that same one over and over. He's gonna pull it. Oops. Underneath, this one scoops. So I'm pushing myself out horizontally as I push him away. Leg goes over, but I'm keeping hold on this one. Now, arm bar time. <laughs> I wanna get as close as I can so my butt is right next to his shoulder. So whether that's... <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, don't go too explicit with yeah, that Yeah, you remember this <laughs> So <laughs> either, if I'm bigger than him, I can use my feet and my hands to pull him towards me. Or if he's smaller than me, I use my feet to scoop myself towards him. So I want a nice high lever, 
high fulcrum. So it's not on my groin. I'm pinching my knees together. For me, I cross my toes. And the, the one that's closest to his head is underneath, so it's, it's anchored in there. Because he's gonna try and throw that leg off. Now, I cross my toes because it brings my knees together. Sometimes if you cross your ankles, your knees go apart. So for me, I cross my toes. Nice and high, pinch. Now, one finger. Oop, lift the hips, there we go. For fighting, secure it. Then we go. That's the one. Thumb to the ceiling, elbow to the ground. So we're good. That's the one. Number six, the Lord Collingwood. So I took this from an art called Sila. So Indonesian Sila, and we kind of adapted it to, to make it fit for MMA. And I call this the Lord Collingwood. <laughs> and everybody goes, who's Lord Collingwood? Now, here's why. This is really stupid, but <laughs> this is a Nelson, right? Everybody knows who Lord Nelson is. He won the Battle of Trafalgar. But unfortunately, he died in the first volley. So Lord Collingwood took over, and he's from Newcastle, which is where we are. So this is the Lord Collingwood. So, full half Nelson, Lord Nelson. Push the face to the floor, keep the full lock on the body, and I just make a wish. Number five, neck crank. And this is coming from catch wrestling, which is actually an English art as well. Catch from catch Wigan. Catch. Wigan. Ugh. So, he pulls it. I'm gonna tear that out and I post. So I'm posting on the floor. I'm gonna get his legs out of it. Now I go back to that chain grip, see my shoulders in his head, and I lay him right out as flat as I can. <laughs> so my forearm now is right across his, his windpipe. So this is more of an air choke. For me, I, I tend to consider this as a strangle. So if you're cutting the blood off, it's a strangle. I always think of Frankenstein, right? And if it's cutting the wind off, it's a choke. Like you get that bit of chicken stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. <laughs> If he's up here, this neck crank doesn't really work so good. So what I do, though. yeah, so I gotta lay him all the way out, as flat as I can, and then I just crank his head forward. So your neck just like fold in itself. It's yeah. glamorous. Be really careful, guys, with neck cranks. Mm -hmm. It's not so worth it. It's, it's nasty. Trust me. Number four, stacked neck crank. Okay, so same thing. So this is the next one. I'm gonna go a little bit different here. So this time when I stack out, I'm gonna put both my hands on the floor. And now I have to put all my weight on this neck. Oh, that is, how creative is that? Where did, where did that one originate from? This is Shudo. That's Shudo as well? Yeah. Did you fight you being folded up? <laughs> right. Obviously in, in amateur MMA, this is um, illegal, so I've got to be So I'm going here, post. See, I do my opposite hand to foot. So when I'm posting, opposite hand to foot comes out and I walk out. So now I just catch both his hands like that. See how my chest is right on the back of his head? Feel it straight away? Yeah, I'm pushing his chin right to his chest here. This is really bad. And if you can imagine. In full situ, oh somebody could be down on you. It's just like body broken. Don't, don't kill anybody. So cool. be gentle with these ones, guys. Be gentle with me. <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> Catch. Number three, knee bar. Again, always we're doing the same entry, that's okay. If he peels that thing, whoop. So I'm going for the stack neck crank, and if it slides out, I'm just gonna walk over and go right to my knee bar. Normally when people are being stacked like that, they're trying to brace it up. Mm. So sometimes either it's gonna slide out or I'm gonna let it slide out, mm -hmm. and I dive over. Number one, knee bar. So again, I pinch my knees together. If you can, I, I like to put it on my face. And I go here like that. Second one is you can put the big toe on your face and you pull it. <laughs> Third one, figure four. And then, okay. That's good. Number two, arm triangle choke. So when he pulled it away, we've been on this side. So that was all of our half Nelson attacks. Now I'm gonna go all the way to the other side. So you can see that loop is already created. So any sort of triangle choke has to have this diagonal loop, which is underneath one arm and over one arm. So the idea with the triangle choke is, his shoulder is cutting off the blood supply on this side, whereas some part of my body is cutting off the blood on this side. So here, 
Again, we're gonna post, pump, pump, pass his left thread. There we go. So now I'm just gonna spin here. Spin, 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 spin. So really important there. As I turn, my, my leg is still in his half guard. So either I put my knee on his belly button and I windshield wiper out, or I pop my knee over to the floor and I'm out. So side choke or arm triangle. This is my catch position. So for me, a catch position is something before a submission. It's a halfway point. It's something we can fight from and we're one step away from it. So this is a catch position for me. I grab the shoulder, my head goes to his head and we can fight from there. So it's a pretty strong position. For me to sink this in now, I lift my head and I get my arm in as far as I can. And I do that as, as I need to. I'm gonna sprawl right out and I'm gonna walk around. So I'm just starting to walk my feet right around here. So I'll sprawl out, walk around. We're here, two on one. I go for it, he pulls it off. Whoop. I'm going all the way across, post up, pass the guard. Catch position. Lift, shove it through. There we go. Number one, figure four leg triangle. Again, there's many, many ways you can get into it. I'm doing the same thing over and over so you can see it. Mm -hmm. But this can even go from here. See so if I can double and I can pull this thing back, I can jump my leg over his arm, which is where I need to be. And I just catch it. So I try and get as close. Now I'm pinching my knees together here and I do a tricep dip. If that doesn't go, arm bar. Come on. <laughs> American and Kimura, sir. So that's like three different submissions in one. And wrist. Wow. It's mind boggling just how many, like, because a lot of those things that, like, we've gone over there, like the arm bars, the Kimuras, they're things that, like, I've done in the guard with you. Yes. But I have never. Yeah, and that's it. Once you understand how a thing works, then you can do it anywhere. Yeah. So it's, it's nice to kind of memorize a lot of techniques, but at the same time, it's really good to dissect them. Mm. Why does that work? How does that influence his biology, mm. right? So why doesn't an arm bend? Why can't you breathe there? And how can I use, if it works in one position, how exactly. can I like transform that and put it into another position as well? Exactly. So I'm gonna go back to that same one. Here, here. he's gonna pull that off. So this, see how I trap his arm down? I jump this one, I like to take the chin there, just so I can get my leg under. So my back of my hamstring is against his neck. I'm gonna figure for that. Squeeze my knees, lift, and I do a tricep dip. Again, straight arm bar, wrist. If you want, V up. Here, I just put it against my leg. <laughs> that one V sucks. down. <laughs> so we use all these things as counters, right? If I had you in an arm bar here, so if we did this one, and we got to here. Okay, and I was going for that arm bar, and he was throwing, uh, or even if he grabs his hand, sometimes people will grab their hand, right? So I can go here, scoop you up. So it's a nice place to work, and you'll find all different ways you can figure out how to get to these things. So that is our list. Thank you. Thank you very much for tuning in and watching me pretty much be murdered for a while. Let us know what you guys think in the comment section below and whether you'd be down for more videos like this of me being brutalized in a variety of innovative ways. Special thanks again to our friends at Team Phoenix in Newcastle. And don't forget to check out and support your own local MMA gym. I've been Gareth from What Culture Combat and I'm sure I'll see you very soon.